Now the next solution is us cutting off that leg. But before that, we try to manage that leg. So how do we manage that leg? We are actually using honey to clean that wound. Hey, where? Where? <laughs> I asked one nurse, why do we use uh, the, the, the honey? And they go fetch honey from the forest because that is the original honey. Hmm? That one has natural sugar. They use it to clean wounds. And she told me that when you apply honey on a wound, what it does is the bacteria that are eating up the wound will now ignore the wound and come and eat the sugar or the honey. Inflammation of this endothelial lining, the liver has to send something to fix this endothelial lining, so it sends in cholesterol. We've talked about this before. So cholesterol is actually a substance that actually fixes inflammation in your blood vessels. Then we blame the same same cholesterol because of high LDL. A story for another day. So as your liver fixes this inflammation, what is happening is you're actually thinning this blood, uh, the, the diameter of this blood vessel. And once you narrow that diameter, hypertension is coming in. But hypertension aside, because we'll talk about hypertension as a whole topic on its own. But this is what is happening. These blood vessels, remember, they are supplying blood to different organs, to different tissues, to different uh, uh, systems. So for example, if you have those that blood vessel supplying uh, uh, nutrients, oxygen, and all these cells towards the heart, and then you narrow it, what you're doing is you're reducing the supply of oxygen and nutrients towards the heart muscles. If you block that blood vessels completely, there is no supply of nutrients and oxygen towards the heart muscles. And since the heart muscles require oxygen and nutrients in form of energy, and you've blocked the supply, what is going to happen to your, your heart muscle? What do you think will happen to your heart muscles? If this same, same uh, uh, blood vessel is supplying your brain and you're occluding it, and your brain lacks oxygen, lacks nutrients, what do you think is going to happen to your brain? If this blood vessel is supplying your leg and now you've blocked nutrients and oxygen from flowing into the leg, what do you think will happen to that leg? Also remember, this blood vessel is carrying white blood cells, the immune cells. But since there's always high amounts of glucose in your system, these white blood cells become very sluggish because the sugar touches these white blood cells and makes them slow, makes them very dense, so they cannot navigate into the blood vessels. So, in case you get a wound or an ulcer, or you hurt yourself in the toe, and this blood vessel is the one that is supplying blood and nutrients and these immune cells towards the leg, what do you think will happen? Because you want to supply nutrients to that uh, leg so that it continues functioning. You want to supply oxygen to the cells of the leg so that they don't die. You want to supply immune cells to the leg. If at all there is an ulcer, there is a wound, there is a, a cut, that leg starts to heal. You want to supply inflammatory mediators, the cytokines, to go into that wound and start initiating a healing process through inflammation. But you block that blood vessel. So how, how will we carry immune mediators towards that, cell, that, 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 that uh, wound? How will we carry the inflammatory mediators there? How will we supply glucose there? How will we supply, uh, not glucose, uh, energy, all these, even ketone bodies? How will we supply uh, oxygen towards that, that leg? What is the end result? The end result is ischemia. Ischemia basically means no or low supply of oxygen. So your tissues are getting very minimal supply of oxygen. We get ischemia. When you get ischemia, that muscle starts to die. You get into necrosis, basically means rotting. Are you seeing how that foot is starting? Are you seeing how we are getting a leg ulcer that is going to give you uh, the gangrene? The soft tissue injuries? that will cause you the inflammation. Now you start getting uh, the gangrene, the necrosis. Now this necrosis can even go deeper into your bones and you get the osteomyelitis, inflammation of the bones and the infection of the bone. Now the next solution is us cutting off that leg. But before that, we try to manage that leg. 
So how do we manage that leg? We are actually using honey to clean that wound. Hey, weh. Weh. <laughs> I asked one nurse, why do we use uh, the, the, the honey? And they go fetch honey from the forest because that is the original honey. Hmm? That one has natural sugar. They use it to clean wounds. And she told me that when you apply honey on a wound, what it does is the bacteria that are eating up the wound will now ignore the wound and come and eat the sugar or the honey. <laughs> weh, weh, weh. <laughs> so now the, <laughs> the bacteria will ignore your tissues and move and come start eating the honey. And now they will not destroy the wound. And now through that, we can now clean them up and start healing processes. But now my question is, how will you initiate a healing process when you have not opened up the blood vessels that are actually supplying this wound? Crickets. Question number two. Diabetic food is actually a complication of sugar. And this wound is actually full of glucose, which is a, actually a culture for growth of microorganisms. So a lot of bacteria feed on this glucose in that wound. Now you're introducing another sugar, which is actually another food for this bacteria. So now the only thing this bacteria can do is actually multiply because they have plenty of food. So how will we recover? Ah! <laughs> now these are the questions that I'm asking in my head, but I don't want to bring them forth, okay? Because I want to get as much information from her as possible. So I, you, you, you should have seen me looking at her. You should have just seen my face. Looking at her ranting and explaining how this sugar sucks the bacteria. Now when you clean the wound now, you've taken the bacteria off plus the honey. I'm like, ah. <laughs> And then I'm like, does honey have sugar? Yes, it does. But that sugar is very, very okay. And it's natural. So it does not cause any problems. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So when I pour sugar on a wound that has bacteria, it's okay. As long as it's natural sugar. Eh, eh, eh. Anyway, <laughs> the reason why we have diabetes is insulin resistance, a sugar problem. is also a fatty liver, a sugar problem. Which sugar? Fructose problem. Fructose is in honey. So how can we use fructose to treat a fructose problem? Maybe I'm the one who has a problem. Anyway, let's continue. So diabetes complications are classified into two. One is the macrovascular. The other one is microvascular. What are macro? Macro, when you hear the word macro, macro basically means bigger. So when you hear macro and then vascular, that is macro, bigger blood vessels. Vascular means vessels. So macrovascular, bigger blood vessels. When you hear microvascular, what we mean is smaller blood vessels. So they are divided into two. One is the macrovascular. The other one is the microvascular. Okay? So don't struggle to cram that. Just know we have issues of sugar with the larger blood vessels and issues of sugar with the smaller blood vessels. So this is what is going to happen. On the smaller blood vessels, this is where we have the syllabus. The syllabus, the textbook experts shouting, retinopathy, nephropathy, uh, what else? Peripheral neuropathy. All that. <laughs> yeah? So when you're talking about the smaller blood vessels, you actually, sugar is blocking these smaller blood vessels. And these smaller blood vessels supply your eye. So when they supply your eye, they destroy the retina. The retina. All of you are aware of the retina, right? Or should we introduce now a class? People should start drawing the eye. <laughs> So yes, so we have the retina and the retina is actually controlling uh, your vision and stuff and the lighting. So now you're hurting the retina through sugar. Guess what is going to happen? Of course, blindness is coming. So if you block the blood vessels, the smaller blood vessels that supply the eye, you destroy your retina. There's no glucose, there's no oxygen, there's no nutrient supply towards the retina. You start de destroying it. Now you end up getting the cataracts, you end up getting, uh, now they will tell you they want to peel your eye. Have you ever heard of your grandparents uh, saying that Nilienda Hospitali and they peeled my eye, they removed that coating? Where I come from, they say, Walinitoa ile, ile nyumba ya bui bui. They removed that, how, that web. 
So your grandmother goes to hospital and then they peel off the eye. But you see, they're peeling off the eye, but they have not fixed the sugar in the system. They have not fixed the occluded blood vessels. What are they doing? Why? Why, why would you do that? Just fix the sugar problem and the eye goes back to normal. But if you peel out the, the eye, you will go again and they want to peel another one. Now they give you spectacles, a very expensive lens and stuff. But the reality is they did not fix the sugar problem. They did not even tell you to stop eating what you've been eating. So the micro one is retinopathy. When you hear the word pathy, basically means destruction or death. So retina, retinopathy, that is one. Number two, we have destruction of the kidneys. That is called the diabetic nephropathy. Nephrons are the cells in the kidneys. So when you say nephron and pathy, that is nephropathy. That is destruction of the nephrons. So you destroy your kidneys. You destroy your kidneys. And guess what? When you destroy your kidneys, this is where the, the, relation, the relationship between hypertension also comes in. Remember, hypertension is being caused by narrowing of those blood vessels as a result of sugar. Now you come in and destroy the kidneys. Now that wasn't your hypertension because kidneys control salt balance and they control blood pressure balance. But when you have your kidneys being destroyed, you start filtering protein. So you'll get protein in urine, that is proteinuria. You'll start getting uh, uncontrolled blood pressure because now you cannot control salt balance. And that's the time they tell you, avoid salt. Salt causes hypertension. Salt did not cause hypertension. What caused hypertension is the sugar. So they destroyed the kidneys so you cannot regulate salt. So eat your salt, drop the sugar. Now when you destroy your kidneys, you don't produce the hormone that is called erythropoietin, EPO. This hormone actually instructs your bone marrow to produce red blood cells. So guess what is going to happen? When you kill your kidneys, you get into anemia. And guess what is going to happen again? They will put you on drugs, for, they call them hematinics. So they put you on hematinics. They put you on that syrup for boosting blood. They put you on that iron, uh, iron sulfate and, uh, uh, and, 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 and folic acid tablets. You take them for a whole month. Nothing is happening. They start injecting you. They give you that, that, the other one that you break. The, I don't want to mention the name. You just break and drink it. They give you iron sucrose in your, in, in your vessels. But they have not fixed what is causing kidney problems. So you're not going to recover anyway. It's temporary. They're fixing the symptoms. They're not fixing the cause. If you treat for anemia without treating kidney problems, without treating the sugar problem, what are you doing? Anyway, let's continue. So now we have nephropathy. Remember retinopathy? Remember nephropathy? So you better, <laughs> better hold these names in your head because I'll ask you at the end of this live anyway. So we have retinopathy. We have nephropathy, and then we have those people complaining of numbness and sometimes burning sensation in their legs or cold feet. That is what we call peripheral neuropathy. Neuro. Neuro is for neuron, the nerves. So nerve damage is neuropathy. I feel like a teacher right now. So you get the numbness. When you get that numbness, just start to understand. You're already getting from pre-diabetic to diabetic stage, and it's getting worse. Again, before you leave the eye, the optic nerve is a nerve that actually supplies the eye. So remember, sugar kills the nerves. When you kill the nerves, you get blindness. When you kill the nerves, you get numbness. The tingling, you feel like somebody's pricking your legs uh, with, with, with a needle. Now you know that numbness is actually coming as a result of sugar killing your nerves. You start losing memory. And also on the microvascular, you start getting erectile dysfunction as men. Men, anytime you get that erectile dysfunction, Simply no. I asked that on a, question, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a short video. I said, are men getting erectile dysfunction or are they just trying to, to lie to the women that we are focusing on our goals? Of course, you'll create an excuse because you failed in your role. And one of your roles is to satisfy your woman in bed. So when you fail in that role, you will create every excuse around it. And once that stage gets there, you just know this is a sugar problem. You're actually occluding the blood vessels that supply your penis and remember, erection is as a result of blood gorging into your penis. So for you to get an erection, you need blood to gorge into your penis. So you need blood flow towards the penis. Again, you need nervous supply, the autonomic supply into the penis to get an erection and maintain it. 
So that tells you, if you kill the nerves, nerves that supply the penis, and if you kill uh, the blood flow towards the penis, you are a dead man. The flag will not wake up. Brother Bernard will be stubborn. You might erect, but you will not maintain the erection. That is if you are lucky to erect. Most of people who are diabetic, they have a hard time even getting an erection. And that's when they go to take the blue pill, the sildenafil, because the blue pill opens up the blood vessels to, to help blood to gorge into the penis. But one thing I ask myself is, by the time you're getting erectile dysfunction, are you still thinking about having sex? Crickets. <laughs> anyway, so those are the microvascular. Uh, peripheral neuropathy, uh, nephropathy, retinopathy, erectile dysfunction as a result of nerve and the blood flow, uh, killing of blood flow towards, uh, towards the penis. And then we have painless injuries. Most of the times when you've killed the nerves in the leg, when you get an injury, you will not even feel it. When you wear a shoe that actually uh, uh, causes damage to your foot, you will not even feel it. That's why most of the diabetic patients who come with diabetic foot is actually an open wound, a very serious wound, but they're not feeling the pain. Have you ever seen a diabetic foot? Simply Google the pictures of diabetic foot. On my Telegram channel, my Telegram is actually called Health and Wellness Sport. So join that Telegram channel. There is a, a, a photo that I shared of a, an old man who has a diabetic foot. My friend, if you see that foot, you will actually fear sugar with all you have. You will fear sugar. You will start running away from carbohydrates, the processed foods. You start listening to what I'm saying because these are things that are actually happening. And most of you, the weird part is your relative has been admitted with diabetes. He's on a diabetic bed being managed with diabetes. The hospital are actually feeding them with rice, ugali, seed oils, sugar, milk, bread. That's their, that's their normal foods in the, in, the, in the woods. But you who has all this information, you will still carry bananas to them. You still carry uh, Ribena to them. You still carry the Lucozet. You still carry the sugar and the energy drinks. You still carry soda. You still take watermelons to them, thinking that this is going to change their lives. You still carry biscuits. You still carry bread, the brown bread. You're taking it to a diabetic person. And now you're wondering, they, in they inject them with insulin, their blood sugars go down. You give them bread, their blood sugars shoot. 